Okay, I'm going to call this meeting in order Shelby County Supervisors of this April 4th, 2023. Any conflict of interest on the agenda today, ma'am? No. None. Any additions to the agenda? No. Motion approved. Motion by Charlie. Okay. Second by Bryce. Approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Any changes or corrections to the minutes marked for March nope. 28th? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented then? Motion. Second motion by Bryce, second by Charlie. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Approval of the claims for the 31st of March. Any questions on that? No. Going over a motion to approve. Okay. Second okay. by Charlie, second by Bryce. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Next on agenda, um, Jay Ring, who's our Shelby County Weed Commissioner report. Good morning, Jay. Good morning. I just get a the list that you could sit right here. We notified or we used to notify. Last year it was it was they changed it. It was from uh, they changed it from uh, in 2019. So there's two different codes on the on the legislature. But basically, there's a 317 1A and then a 58. This 58 is what they changed. It, they, now they're enforcing the 58. So the list that's on there is is the 58, the weeds from the administrative code of 58. So this is what we're going to have to enforce. And then you go off the 317.1A to use the enforcement. So I'm just making sure that you guys are all on the same page with me because it's a little bit of changes on there. It, like before it said class one, two, three. So now it's A, B, and then what the, a big change is that G that says all other species of thistles belonging to the Yes, Ricardus, that's, that's a pretty big change. So just wanted everybody to be aware that that they changed that, make sure we're all on the same page. There's a lot of confusion at the weed commissioner conference I went to. I was pretty confused until I talked to the, the state guy. He kind of put me on the right, right course there. Yeah, okay. so. Now I'm gonna start spraying here before too long, but got a couple younger guys hired to help. Kind of training one of them right now, and the other one will be starting in the middle of May. So, okay, that's all I got. Just making sure we're all on the same page with this list because it's a lot different than the one before 2019. And this is what's going to be published in the paper. Yes. Okay. Right here. Yep. You're calling the paper, right? <coughs> yeah. Okay. You're, you're, you're in contact with your client. So, that's all I got. Any big concerns with any of these? And are you? Battle the biggest before. one was if they if you find Palmer amaranth, you have to eradicate. There's no there's no uh, way around it. So if we find it, it's got to be gone. Is it an easy test? No, no. It's related to pigweed. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Water hemp. Water hemp. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Is there some in the county? I've never seen it. I have seen it in Pop County, but I haven't seen it in yeah. Shelby. So. Okay, matter of time then. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Do we have a motion to approve the report of publication? Okay, motion. Second. Motion by Bryce, second by Charlie. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> motion carried. Thank you, Jay. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. You guys have any um, reports, supervisors? No, no, I was already told you I couldn't make it to the Fort County meeting. Okay. The only thing I have is I attended oral arguments last Friday in Des Moines at the Federal District Court on the injunction that someone has placed on our ordinance. Um, all I can say it's the judge will be ruling on that in the next four to six weeks. So for, uh, one thing I will say is a lot of her questions seem to center around not so much the ordinance as it was environmental issues. So we'll see what See what comes forward down the road, but I want to just let, let you know where that's at. And um, I would say probably once we get that ruling, then Tim and Jason Craig, who is the lead counsel on that, will probably have a meeting with us at that time. So, okay? Yep. Uh, Todd Bellini, Chamber Report. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Todd. Wanted to mention a few items that are kind of community items taking place right now. Um, 
The first being the public health is uh, conducting their community health assessment survey. And so that's something you can just go out to MERT2 Medical's website, it's right there. And it's, it's really important that folks take the time to fill it out because again, what, we're look, what they're looking at is, you know, they're trying to plan what are we gonna need, not, not just tomorrow, but what are we gonna plan for over the next five years as far as the health needs in the, in the county. So um, hopefully folks will get out there and, and fill that out. Um, another thing is uh, make sure that people take advantage of this. The Harlem Community High School students on um, April 19th are going to be doing their community cleanups okay. and, and work. When is that? April 19th. April 19th. So what they need to do is they need to call Jamie Anderson, and that number is 755 three one zero one and tell her okay this is what I need done get on the list <coughs> you get on the list so the kids can get out and again you know it's any community within the school district it's not just Harlem that the kids get point to work in so you know. my in-laws take advantage of that and they do a wonderful job they do a great really job and I know there's a lot of folks out there that don't don't think about it but they could they could use the help help clean up their place a little bit and before it gets out of hand and the kids do a really good job do. so yes yeah. outside work usually yeah mostly yeah. outside work although they've done things like help with some garage cleanups and stuff like okay. that too so yeah. um and then the other thing is a great way to take advantage of may is uh, mental health awareness month and so kd sandquist started this a little while ago and they really work well what they are is they're called brain breaks so groups or employers can just call uh, Katie at the um, hospital and schedule one of these. And what she does is she comes in, it only takes about 15 minutes, but she gets the group together, gives them some pointers on, okay, here's some things that you can do, that, and a lot of people don't think about them. If you're just getting really stressed out, you know, like the job, you got something going on at home or your job's stressing you out or you're just physically not feeling well, Here's a few things that you can do that to just reset, so we don't have you know situations where people are going to that next level and saying and doing things that we don't want them to do <coughs> because they're just stressed out or they're worried or they're they got something going on at home. So uh, again, that's that's in the entire month of May. She does them all the month of May. So it just gives Katie Sanquist a call at the hospital and she'll help you out with that. So in addition to that, so I'll be at the Shelby City Council meeting tonight and we'll have the first discussion. There's a developer out of Omaha who's looking at coming into what is their industrial park area there as you're heading into town. And he's considering building um, some warehouse space, a 50 unit apartment building, wow. and then some daycare tied to the apartment building. So we'll be have the first meeting tonight with with that developer. Um, and, you know, we'll Fifty see. units. That's where he wants to start. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll see where, where it goes. And he's, I understand. I mean, he's looking at that market, and saying, okay, I've got, you know, some folks from Menards might be interested in being able to relocate to be closer to work. Yes. There might be some folks who are commuting right now to Council Bluffs in Omaha. That wouldn't mind not having quite as long of a community you know mm -hmm. right. and um i think um not positive but i think there's a short waiting list at least for cardinal law you know mm -hmm. i think they're full and there's a few other people that's that a great location mm -hmm. yeah. and it's a good location so <coughs> it's obvious but it is in shelby county it's a shelby county yep yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um so it'll be you know it'll be interesting to see but um, I'm, I think it'll be great to move forward with that. We've got two or other three projects that I'm hoping within the next couple of months we'll be able to you know, make some announcements just waiting for folks to cross T's and dot I's and commit to moving forward. So one of those might even be a, a recycling center, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Wow. laughs> so uh, we'll see. Yes, yeah. We'll yeah. <coughs> You know, it's you're really optimistic. <laughs> well, the individual is um, excited about doing it, trying to explain to them the commitment it takes. Yeah. Um, not only time, but um, you know, 
you've got to be sitting on about ten thousand dollars of cash when you open the door to be able to pay out because mm -hmm. you have to wait to get paid back and that's what i'm wondering about if this person's going to be able to do outside of that hopefully we get one going or at least so is there some help out there to help in that situation not really <coughs> Yeah, unless, yeah, unless yeah. it's yeah. from a, we could do a gap loan or come from a corporation, yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, um, but there's not anything at the state level that would that. Too bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. John Thomas, Hungry Canyons Alliance. Can give us an update this morning? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. John. Right. So, uh, my executive committee, of which Charlie sits on, has asked me to come and visit all the 19 counties that I cover because there's been so much turnover on the county boards. So um, I've already requested the $5,000 annual dues for this year. This is just an educational <coughs> short visit. Um, so last time I was here was 2019. And uh, been that long? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Kidding. Um, uh, so <coughs> Hungry Canyons is, is really unique. Uh, there's no other organization like it that I know of anywhere in the country or the world uh, because we, um, our entire goal is to um, help counties and other public entities in, in Western Iowa deal with uh, stream bed degradation. And basically what's happened is we have these deep less soils in, in Western Iowa and then we've got a um, uh, deep less well Lust will erode when it gets wet um, <coughs> really fast, whereas till won't. <coughs> um, glacial till. Uh, we've got a, a county road around every mile, basically. Um, we've got a high drainage density, which just means there's a lot of stream per mile because the valleys are going to the Missouri rather than the Mississippi. Um, and uh, when we channelized our streams back in the early 1900s um, basically they were stable and then they became unstable and now they've been down cutting and, and widening um, so the classic example is Mosquito Creek on the west side of the county which um, uh, uh, took a guy his name went um, uh, he said that he went over that stream in a, in a covered wagon when he was a kid oh. And now it's 30 feet deep. Um, so, uh, Hunger Canyons has been around since 90, 90, early 90s. We got our first federal money in 92. That went away in 2010. We've been getting a state appropriation since 96. Uh, currently, we get $500,000 a year. Pretty much all that goes towards construction. Um, Your, the county dues that all counties give, $5,000 plus, or that goes to my salary and then uh, the lobbyist. Um, so, uh, and over the years, Shelby County. I appreciate this handout too, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Shelby County has, has uh, you have 36 grade control structures that Hungry Canyons has had their fingers in, in some way or another. In the, in the county. Uh, a lot of, there's been like 22 uh, land under projects. Uh, there's been 16 uh, county projects. Uh, the main, so these photos here, um, you've got a lot of weirs, especially on the mosquito. So if you look on the downstream side of the bridge, that's where, you, that's where it's going to be because it's protecting the bridge from having any more erosion. Um, you've got a few flumes in the county again on the western side, um, but then you've got culverts, great control issues all throughout the county. Um, and so Hungry Canyons will pay for 80% uh, of the great control cost of any of these practices that you're doing. An in-stream weir, culvert, uh, it doesn't matter. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, I don't know how much you guys have heard about um, 
what's going on with the core. But so uh, we we had a speaker at our last hundred meetings meeting, and no rules and laws have changed, but uh, the way they interpret the laws has changed. So now, if, or if the county wants to do, let's say they have an old bridge and they want to make a culvert with it because it's cheaper. Um, if, if the footprint of the culvert <coughs> is greater than three hundredths of an acre, so 1,300 square feet, footprint of a normal size house, then they have to mitigate for the entire project. And mitigation credits are expensive, $50 to $100 dollars per credit. Um, you guys do have a bank here in the county, <coughs> mm -hmm. um, so that will help you if you do have to cross that road um, uh, but the thing that has got me really concerned is the WOTUS um, there's going to be a Supreme the Supreme Court's going to review the WOTUS here in June but if um, WOTUS isn't voted down then my concern is any perennial stream anywhere in the county is going to be regulated the same way that you know all stream, you know, way other streams are currently. And I don't see any reason why they wouldn't apply that rule to road ditches or anything else. So the money come along with that? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just figured. <laughs> the, my, the way, I've, after talking with a lot of core people over the years, I think their intent with all these rules is that they just don't want any streams to be impacted anywhere at any time unless you're paying through the notes for it. So. That's really good news. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, do you guys have any questions for me? <coughs> any structures on the Elkhorn Creek? Yeah, so that would be um, on the southeast side of the, the county. Uh, I don't think we've we've participated in any projects. Audubon County has two just across the line. I've noticed over the years that has really gone deeper and deeper. Yeah. 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 There must be a lot of fall there. I'm sure there is. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed <coughs> down the Elkhorn that uh, if you're driving around in that area, the, the, uh, there's a lot of great control in the culvert system mm -hmm. around it. So. I think, for the most part, most of the streams in Western Iowa have done their, the, the big streams have done their cutting because we have structures, um, and the cutting is still occurring on the smaller streams, the tributaries that have all the culverts on them. So that's where I've seen the, the first, through I would say like 2004, we were doing weirs left and right. Ever since then, we've been doing more culverts than weirs because that's, I think everything's kind of stabilized in the main channel. Um, there's, you know, like Mosquito, for example, uh, those, some of those weirs are are approaching 40 years old, so we might have really? to visit, wow. visit those again someday. I mean, the, a lot of them were done in the, uh, early 90s, so I guess 30, 30 years old, mm -hmm. yeah. see the of those. Yeah. yeah, they really work too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, engineer report, Brandon. Good morning. Good morning. John gave you all that good news about <coughs> waters in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's been Charlie. Um, just a brief update today. Um, we're working on patching. Got F24 done. Should finish up Linden today or tomorrow. Uh, then all the guys will be back out blading, kind of been cycling them through. But I know all the, the rock roads kind of need some love right now, so. Get the guys out, get them, get them way back up, get the washboards and potholes fixed and stuff like that. Because hopefully spring's here. Hopefully there's no more snow. It's uh, <laughs> I thought that three weeks ago, and I 
get seven inches of that one day. So, but uh, been hauling rock continuous it, continuously since the last meeting, and hopefully that kind of tapers down a little bit. Got most of the worst spots covered, I think. So, they still be hauling out like after these guys grade. Yes. Some of the spots. Yep. Yep. Lead it then. Yep. We'll still have some a couple trucks running, not full blast like we have. Okay. So. Uh, Chris and I have been out doing bridge inspections, uh, hopefully finished today. I think we've got 11 left. Yeah. Um, it had some minor findings, but didn't really find anything major. So that's that's always a good thing, but we've got 11 left. So we to count our chickens before they hatch here. But yep. uh, um, excavator crew, there's one on F58 doing some ditching. Um, He'll move to Oak Road for a culvert replacement after he's down there. And then the bridge crew's on Hazel, north of Highway 37, replacing pipes and fixing some issues. Um, they'll start bridging when the utilities are moved. I think they're ready to go, but uh, waiting on REC to move a high line before we can get started. So, okay. um, When will they start on that little water crossing there in West Erling? It won't be the first one that we, it might be the first one that we work on, but I think they're going to go bridge in first. No, I'm just um, wondering when it would be late spring, early summer. Probably sometime in the summer when it's the okay. driest, I would assume in July, August, something like okay. that, Steve. Um, uh, and then I guess just kind of an FYI, the DOT is working on that bridge on Highway 44 right east. Of 191 it's completely closed the official detours up 191 f32 m16 south um then i've talked to them hopefully they <coughs> fix it but they put all their detour signs on u posts cheap u posts so the wind the last couple of days has not been kind to them if it hasn't bent the post so they're uh, parallel to the wind and uh, it's blowing them out moved them out of the ground or snapped them off and um, just excuse me let the comm center know that uh, you know it, it's a DOT project and who to get a hold of and hopefully they put you know, we put all our posts on all our signs on Telspar just because they don't move um, with that and they get any wind they work themselves so out of the ground. Is that a full replacement on the bridge? Redeck I believe yeah. and they told me six weeks but I I'm banking on sometime in June they'll probably be done. Okay. Um, someone said that they don't have any equipment there as of Sunday. So, um, and then I know Mr. Shelton, I believe Jim Shelton was in talking about Iowa home base community and Mr. Cavanaugh stopped me. Um, I believe that's going through and they ask about signs coming into the county. Um, they'll provide the signs and We'll put them put up, up. Okay. when they come in. So Good. there'll be signs on F32, F58, M47, F24, and M16 as you enter the county. So I okay. uh, just wanted to see if any of you had any issue with that. Thanks for working with them. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a good, good project and a, got a good, uh, good goal there. So okay. that's all I have for today. When do we start getting rock from Tennyson? ASAP. Um, so the railroad and Mark Marietta were having some. So we're ready. We okay. let them go up there as soon as we get a train. I think our name's on the first train, so okay. trucks will head up there as soon as it comes in. What do you think it? I would have thought it would be here already, okay. to be honest. But so uh, yeah, it'll definitely be this month. Hopefully, end of this week, beginning of next week. So do we try to put that on the roads then? Or yeah, that'll go straight out on the roads. Okay. Um, we won't stockpile that till July when it's dry. Okay. We'll put it on the roads for a couple months here. So, okay. Are you doing any rock hauls? No, we're not going to do a rock haul this year. Just the way the budget's working out, we've we hauled a lot of rock early. Get yeah. out there now. So, okay. just the way the the rock budget looks. Okay. I, no, we're not going to do a, a rock haul this year. So How about pulling shoulders? We're going to try to do that here, Bryce. Once the roads settle out, and that's kind of why we didn't do a rock haul. We're going to try to save some rock because it consumes quite a bit of rock when you pull it in. And, but I've been talking to that outfit that had that 350 available. Whoever they were going to get it from is dragging their feet. So I, I'm not sure, but the Western, I'm sure they would recommend us their 350 for dragging them. 
that just works so much better and it's a lot less work on the maintainers. It works doing it with the maintainers, but for the grinders, it just makes such a more uniform profile of the road. So, okay, that's that's kind of where we're at with that. Okay, and, yeah, we'll proceed as as such. It's just okay. we're we're a world we live in right now. So, yeah. thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Civil Service Commission appointment, Mark. Yeah, the Civil Service Commission. Uh, <coughs> Needs uh, three members, and Matt Hudson emailed back and said he would accept doing it again, another six-year term. Six-year term. Yes. And it would end in December of 27. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? No. Motion approved. They have to do with the hiring of deputies. Yep. Yep. How many people are on the board? Do you know? Uh, three. Three. Yeah. Uh, one's appointed by Marcus. And, um, can't remember who they are. Dean Langenfeld, Matt Hudson, and Claver from Defiance. Bob, Rick, Rick, Rick. Rick. Okay, okay. I'll second that. Okay. I have a motion to reappoint Matt Hudson to the Civil Service Commission. Uh, motion by Charlie, second by Bryce. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thanks, Mark. Authorization to sign <coughs> flexible benefits plan agreement and Midwest Group benefit partners. There's been a change of ownership there. It was over a year ago, and they're just getting around uh, getting us papers okay. to recognize the name change. It's Midwest Group benefits, and uh, so you've had a year to work with them. How's that gone? Fine. It's Fine. the same company, same people. They're very professional and. Anything we need. So it's, same, so it's more or less a name change of the yes. corporation? Yes. Okay. I know, Marcus, you've looked over their business papers. Do you have any issues with anything? No. no, it's just that they're, they're a wonderful company to work with. I mean, if we get stumped by an employee, a weird situation, we can call so there to and help. they know right away what the answer is. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to be able to lean on somebody like that. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the flexible benefit plan with Midwest? Motion. Motion by Second. Bryce. Second by Charlie. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Next on the agenda is a resolution 2023-21 opposition to the proposed local option sales tax funding change. Is Brandon still out there? Brandon brought this to us from the Engineers yeah. Association. I think he snuck out to inspect bridges. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah no, he, he's gone. Okay, Mark, why don't you give us a little update on this? Yeah, uh, Shelby County will take in around $750,000. We presently do. Presently. With the local option tax that was voter approved. Yes. Okay. Uh, years ago, the county accepted that, and one third of it goes to secondary roads, one third of it goes to rural basic. And one third of it goes to uh, general basic, so it's about two hundred fifty thousand to each one, and they're looking to eliminate that. They're it, being the legislature. Yep, and this resolution is in opposition of that. But the carrot, if you will, that they're hanging in front of the three eighths of a percent of that money that they would take in. The, the state would still keep taking the money but not give it back to counties except for three-eighths of a cent and give it to conservation. <coughs> Which, how many years ago they said they were going to backfill and they were going to take care of it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. I don't like this at all. If we have a voter approved local option tax in our county that people voted to go to secondary roads, property tax relief, and what's the third one? Both of them. One's rural basic property tax, okay. the other one's So two thirds basic. of us still on the property tax yes. relief. And now they want to take it to fund <coughs> something that they said they were going to fund decades ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just have a huge problem with that. In fact, I even wonder, because I'm sure somebody out there might even be paying a bond off with that money, if that's even constitutional, you know, on a voter approved. Right. And then if, if, if they do take it away and we want to keep doing what we're doing, instead of having property tax relief, now we've got to raise property taxes for $700,000 a 
that's more than our budget increases a year. And my 6%. opinion is the legislature this year has been focused on decreasing property taxes, and this would do the opposite. Oh. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's a voter approved. I could see if he didn't have it in the county right. and he wanted to do it. But. So I'm not in favor of what they're trying to do here. I think it's on the Senate side that's trying to push this through. I echo that. Mark, do you want to read the resolution? Sure, I will. Um, whereas the voters of Shelby County and cities within the county have voted to enact a one cent local option sales tax in accordance with Iowa code, the revenue derived from the tax is used for road and bridge improvements, public safety facilities, and property tax relief, and the residents of Shelby County have grown on to rely on these revenues as a means to reduce property taxes. And the 2023 legislative session has seen the introduction of Senate File 550, which proposes to convert the local option sales tax efforts into a statewide sales tax and impose the local option sales tax in every jurisdiction, thereby triggering the constitutional amendment to require an allocation of three-eighths of a cent to the Iowa Water and Land Legacy, the I Will Trust Fund. And Senate File 550 proposed to backfill revenues lost due to the proposal. There are concerns of the legislature ability to continue backfilling revenues and voters across Iowa who have voted to implement a local option sales tax or not to do so and voters across Iowa who have voted to utilize the local option sales tax have approved revenue purpose statements and Senate file 550 also sunsets these provisions on January 1st 2025 after which no jurisdiction will have the authority to take either a local <coughs> option sales tax proposal or revenue purpose statement to a vote essentially deleting the local government's ability to have a local option sales tax therefore the Shelby County Board of Supervisors would like to express their support of the current local option sales tax the current law best represents the interest of the voters and furthers the reduction of property taxes, which is a common goal of the county and the Iowa legislature. The Board of Supervisors unanimous, unanimously supports the Iowa Water and Land Legacy, legacy I Will Trust Fund. However, Senate File 550, as currently written, will not only strip the county of control over local option sales tax revenues, but will effectively disregard the will of the voters. Very well said. Um, yeah. You guys have anything to add? No. No. Okay. We have a motion to approve this resolution 2023-21. make a motion. Motion by Bryce. Second. Second by Charlie. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Uh, consideration of Shelby County Golf liquor license, uh, same owner running it this year, Randy Foose. Yeah, and I have, I haven't heard anything in reports okay. or anything. It's pretty, pretty much cut and dry. That's what he has I to do. Haven't really had any problems I've ever heard. You know. Yeah, so it's not approved, but this is just part of the process. You guys have to approve it, and the state will get no, it. Get going. They usually get going by the end of April, don't yeah. they? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I have a motion to approve the Shelby County Golf liquor license. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Charlie, second by Bryce. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Anybody else have anything else out there? I did, but I can't find it. Oh, I sent you all Animal Rescue League, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Just so you know, <coughs> it's on the table. And that's the first uh, correspondence I've received from them. So, yep. and the only. So. Okay. With nothing, all those in favor. Uh, we'll meeting adjourned. Thank you.